I'm Martin Stapper, I'm a farming systems economist and I work to make the farming more efficient with using the powers of nature, healthy soils, so we reduce the fertilizers and chemicals in our food. What do you think, uh, can you give us your view on genetically modified technologies and whether you see that they um, are part of a solution or whether they are causing some problems for what you So GM technologies are not a solution for the future. Because GM, GM technology solutions, the importing a foreign gene into a host, is at the cutting edge of, of technology. Like the science world knows more and more about how that process works. But every time you discover new issues in the genes, and those new issues are unknown at the moment, but they will be dangerous for the future. And what GM is not doing is the GM industry, not, what they are not doing is to have the safety factors worked in with good experimentation. Because the easy, the easy experimentation would have been to have like five generations of cats and mice fed with GM corn, GM soybean, to prove that those mice are happy, healthy and fertile after five generations. But those studies have not been published in the international literature. And those independent scientists that have done it, they found big negatives in the second generation, third generation, with infertility and problems with the liver, with the blood, with the digestive systems. So those studies are then, min are then uh, said that a very bad science by the GM scientists, so they are ostracized, they are said that yeah, you're not good. To, because each time an independent scientist does make those studies, there are always questions by the GM scientists that oh, you, you use the wrong methodology, that's not true. We measured it, but we did the same study, but it never came out with the negatives. But then I'm saying, well, show us the published studies, show us the studies done, and show us that everything is good. And for instance, at the moment, like 20 years ago when I was a scientist, uh, like looking at the big picture, it was already said that each time like each time I talk about an issue in the farming system, like with salinity and acidity and problems with the diseases and insects, that all the time the answer was by a geneticist, oh we can put we can make a GM crop, we can make a GM crop, we can solve the problem, we can solve that problem. And I was always against that simple solution because a GM gene in a foreign gene in a crop as a solution is not the solving the cause of the problem, it's working on symptoms. And it's the symptoms of salinity, of drought tolerance, of uh, in, uh, high nitrogen requirement, of uh, insect damage, disease damage. It's all symptoms of an unhealthy system. So if we go back to the soils, and like our soils are 40% de degraded and very low carbon in the soils, if we go back to increase the carbon in the soils and increase the biological activity in the soil to make the soils healthy, then those plants, the same genes that we now say are good enough for us, those genes become very productive and very uh, much protected by insects and diseases. They, don't, they become insect and disease resistant and drought tolerant. That's, that's one of the positive outcomes of the decade of drought that we had. But all the farmers that did this biological farming and improved the soil quality and minimized chemical use and fertilizer use, that their soils, their crops were higher yielding their neighbors, and so they were drought tolerant. So we can make plants drought tolerant with our current genes if we improve the soil. So are you working with farmers right across Australia now to develop biological farming yep. systems? And if so, how many farmers are you with? Well, the farmers. Farmers right around the country work on the biological systems and to make the soils healthier and improve. And like the carbon sequestration, the carbon that's pumped in the soil in those systems is like 10 times faster than what current farming can do. Because in current farming, the nitrogen fertilizer burns the carbon away so you get lower carbon again. So the carbon stays very low and it's like a 1% is the average around the whole country. And we have to go to 2%, 3% to make a healthy soil system. So, and farmers, it's always difficult to get numbers of how many farmers are working now in this direction. And like we can see like 2,500, 3,000 farmers that would be established in doing 
others are experimenting with it, to try to, with one pellet, to start doing it. And that's now at the moment, like, the way to farm, to change farming, is it's now so difficult to go from current farming to organic farming, because the cold turkey change on a degraded soil is very hard to stay above financially. So, because you, you get, you, the first two years you get all the weeds growing, and you're not allowed to use a herbicide to kill those weeds. And then the weeds make the seeds and they will be coming up for the next uh, generations. And those weeds lower yield. So then you have a lower yield in the first two years and you don't have, you don't have organic certification. So, and then in the third year, because you haven't improved your soils, you have to keep on working on the soil to improve the system. And there are now many farmers that have gone like bottles of farming step by step starting to reduce fertilizer use, like the first year, 20% less fertilizer use, and activating the soil biology. And then like in five, six years, they come to a point that they can become organically certified very easily. So it makes the whole life of on the farm far healthier without stress, because it, it's achievable. And the beautiful thing is that if you do it step by step, you start to see the biology, you start to sense the whole biology working, you see it step by step, and if you do it in a big step, if the step is too big, you can find negatives, which then give negative feedback again on the whole personal system and family and the whole management on the farm. So we can, and that's the whole the healthy soil issue, and then put all the carbon in the soil, the carbon dioxide. And the beautiful thing with that is that in that biological farming, like if the whole planet would do biological farming, of, or agroecological farming, as it is being termed as well, and like in the United Nations, they talk about agroecological farming. If the whole world would go to agroecological farming and pumping carbon in the soil, we decrease the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we stabilize our climates. And then, because we have an active growing surface, we have a healthy soil with active biology, and we, we grow as much green, grow, green grass and crops as possible then the soil becomes cooler and the cool soil, the cool surface of the earth attracts the clouds and then we make rain on the farms again. Because now all the rain is evaporating from the ocean, all the water is evaporating from the oceans with the clouds and it's dropping the water on the ocean, it rains on the ocean because the water in the ocean is cooler than the continents. So we can stop the whole climate change with the good farming and then we get the healthy food from the good farming as well because the, the soil biology in the food makes soil biology in the soil, the microbes in the soil, makes the minerals soluble for the plants to take up. And those plants then have a higher mineral density, a higher nutrient density, but also with vitamins and antioxidants. And it has been proven now in many studies, also from the Organic Center in the United States, that all the studies prove that that food is far better quality than in our current farming.